All right, welcome to our third tutorial session for the Q2 Hackathon and uh, happy to welcome uh, Joshua Lambert, uh, another team member from the product management team. So uh, Josh, I'll, I'll sort of turn things over to you, let you introduce yourself and kick things off. Thanks, Ray, and thanks everyone for uh, participating in our Hackathon. Really appreciate it, it's a great event. Um, I am Joshua Lambert, uh, product manager here, as, as Ray mentioned, and I am currently working on our, our scaling team. Um, so essentially, as GitLab grows and as the PM team itself grows, we're actually looking to, to double the team this year. Um, it makes sense to have a more sort of cross-functional uh, uh, person focused on helping to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of our PM team. So I'm trying to do things like um, help to automate some tasks that were previously done manually, help to have uh, better data feeds coming into the product team so we have better uh, sensing mechanisms for what, you know, what people are using, what problems they're having, um, and uh, things like that. So that's kind of what I'm focused on right now. Uh, however, this is a recent change for me. Uh, up until maybe a couple weeks ago, I was working on our distribution package and monitor teams. Um, and so, uh, for the hackathon, it might make sense, I think, to try to focus there, um, perhaps in one of those stages, as opposed to um, sort of my role, which is sort of a little bit more of the internal side of things, internal ops things. Um, so um, <clears throat> this is our, our team page. If folks haven't seen it, you can get a sense of uh, everyone in the company and what they're up to. I'll just share some links as we go along here so folks can get a sense of um, you know, our pages and how they're structured and how to help find some resources uh, since all of this is public information uh, in GitLab. And of course, that way you can help to contribute uh, regardless of whether it's currently a hackathon or not. Um, so, cool. So, so that's me. Um, and let's talk about uh, perhaps the monitor stage here would, would be a good one to, to go through and give a little tutorial on. Uh, so, um, if folks aren't aware, we have all of our stages and groups and categories laid out in our product handbook. I'll paste that as well here uh, for folks to go ahead and find. Um, but if you just search for GitLab product uh, categories, you'll, you'll come right here to this page from Google. Um, so here is where we list all of our, uh, again, stages and groups. Um, and you can see kind of a, a nice way to kind of visualize and think about these stages and how they fit together here on, on this graphic. So uh, we'll be talking about the, the monitor stage here, um, which is a bit on the tail end of sort of the DevOps cycle here. Um, and that way you can kind of think of this as you, you know, you kind of plan your, your sprints or, or your um, next milestone, you uh, engineer it, you build it, you then test it, package it up, deploy it out to staging or, you know, wherever you're deploying it to, eventually it goes to production, you configure it, and then, and then you try and, of course, monitor it to make sure it's, it's running as you'd expect it to run. Um, so uh, this is where we're kind of sitting here now. And the, the goal of this stage for GitLab is to help really, uh, um, Kind of increase awareness and the user experience of some of these monitoring tools and operational tools within GitLab, uh, sprinkles some of the analytics um, uh, where it makes the most sense. For example, if you could uh, take, for example, some of your errors from Sentry, and you can imagine being able to see, for example, how many errors may have been caused by a particular merge request in the error tracking page or directly on the merge request itself. Um, so great ways to help uh, sort of uh, provide that information contextually where it makes the most sense, no matter what kind of context you're looking at at GitLab, whether it's in the planning phases and kind of the merge request and create phases or elsewhere. Um, so uh, that's kind of where it fits, right? So you take all these things or you take your operational learnings and you're trying to funnel them back into the planning phases and then help to uh, hopefully improve uh, things for behind your next iteration. Um, so that's what we're looking to here on, on the monitoring team. Uh, you can kind of scroll down and get a look at all of these and how they fit together. Uh, we'll jump on down to, to monitor here, monitor stage, and you can see we've broken it up across two different groups. Um, so we have our APM group, which is focused on the metrics, trace, which is focused on error tracking, cluster monitoring, synthetic monitoring, incident management, and status page. Um, you can also get a sense of kind of what we think uh, the current maturity of these are um, uh, here with these kind of tags, right? So, so viable would be that, it's, you know, you can certainly go ahead and use it. Uh, minimal would be sort of we have our first iteration done, um, but there's some work to go before it, it really kind of has a, a more, um, uh, more, more usable surface area, for example. Um, and we have definitions of exactly what those mean on our uh, 
product maturity page if you want to learn more. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and take a look quickly at the product vision here for, for Monitor. Um, this is under Direction Monitor. I'll share that link here as well. And all of our stages have, by the way, have um, for each stage name here under the direction. You can go ahead and find them. Um, and you get a sense of kind of where we're at and where we're going here with our video. Um, incident management is one of the features we're working on for this year. We've actually just shipped the kind of first step towards incident management or incident response um, in 11.11 with the ability to actually create issues from alerts you're getting from Prometheus. Um, but you can get a sense of each of the categories that we have, a little more detail on them here. Um, and then uh, also look at documentation if we have some initial support out, as well as a vision page as well, which talks in more detail around uh, that particular category, why we're doing it, um, and how we plan to sort of um, really take it to the next maturity level, right? If it's minimal to viable, if it's viable to, uh, to complete, et cetera. Um, so that's a bit there on, on the monitoring uh, uh, direction page. Uh, what we can do here, uh, Ray, if it makes sense, maybe to give you folks a kind of quick spin as to the monitoring features, and then talk about some of the, um, you know, perhaps some, some issues that might make some sense along the way, if that sounds good. Cool. Yeah. All right, great. So um, I have a, a personal project here, which I've gone ahead in the interest of time and sort of uh, created. Um, this is actually utilizing the uh, Java Spring template that we have here in GitLab. Um, so I've gone ahead and just simply went through and clicked on essentially new project um, and then went ahead and uh, picked our, our, our Spring project template. Um, and you can go ahead and, and get the exact same kind of project here by doing the exact same thing. The other thing I did is I've gone through and I have attached a Kubernetes cluster uh, to this project. Um, as you can see here, um, uh, by going in and just essentially clicking on add Kubernetes cluster, and then I went ahead and just cached ones pretty simply there. Um, but those are the two steps I've kind of done right now, as well as turning on auto DevOps as well. Uh, auto DevOps, if you haven't seen it, I think we had a, a configurator sort of a hackathon last year, um, but essentially provides an out of the box best practice set of um, CI CD templates to really build and deploy. Um, your projects and it has some uh, kind of intelligence there in there to help detect the language type, build it and do the right thing and then ship it. Um, and so uh, that's what I'm using here to go ahead and uh, to get that deployed. Um, one other quick note as I have, so I've also deployed our Ingress and Prometheus. You can simply click on the install button to go ahead and get those going. Um, but this is kind of some of the, um, a, a bit of foundation to sort of get monitoring up and running in a relatively easy way. Um, so you can really just attach a cluster click on deploy for Prometheus, and then you'll start getting things like your CPU memory utilization and things like that from the cluster. Um, you also can, of course, can zip along and, and change your, uh, your, your window scope here as well to get more details. Um, but that's it, and now you're ready to go ahead and, and start working with monitoring. Um, uh, for folks who would like to contribute, we do have um, one other thing to keep in mind here, if I can uh, spell correctly which would be our GitLab GDK. So if you're uh, kind of working on some of the um, Prometheus related features, um, if you wanted to, we do have a documentation how to um, on how to set up Prometheus uh, and get that going uh, for uh, a, a given set of uh, projects. And so that can help you get going as you might need to have Prometheus hooked up to GDK to then kind of test your work. So that can help you get started there if you're looking to contribute um, and actually need to go ahead and test some of this stuff locally. Um, GDK, for folks who aren't, uh, might not be aware, is our GitLab development kit. Um, so this can help you to go ahead and get started with GitLab and install it and then start working with it uh, locally on your machine. But um, so some of the basics there for how to go ahead and get started. And so let's take a look at some of the uh, GitLab features here. So um, around monitoring. So I've gone ahead and actually have uh, our environments tab here. Um, and you can see that I've gone to deploy to production. Um, this is using the auto dots feature that went ahead and deployed it. And you can see here we have one pod running currently in our production instance. I can actually click on this. Remember I mentioned logging was one of our categories. And you can see here we actually have uh, a, a, a direct pod log coming in from Kubernetes. And so you actually have a sense of what this looks like. And if I had multiple pods, I could also jump between the different pods here in this little drop down. Um, so that's kind of a nice way to simply get access to uh, these logs without having to go ahead and um, 
you know, run kubectl logs or do some other kind of service. Um, in the future, we are looking forward to uh, improving this and providing some search capabilities as well as some more uh, persistent logging. Um, and, and we're kind of taking a close look at the great work that Grafana team has been doing with Loki around how to have a nice um, sort of lightweight logging approach um, that we're looking to hopefully uh, leverage here in the coming next few months here. Um, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, you can simply get these logs from Kubernetes itself. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can go ahead and get your logs there uh, for that particular pod or really any pod we have deployed. Um, we also have a monitoring button here, which you can access for a given environment, uh, which will then pull up a monitoring dashboard, or you can still click, on, click on the metrics tab over here to get a sense of what these metrics look like. Um, you can get a sense of here, for example, the error rate, the latency, and throughput. Um, so what happens here actually is that uh, we have some out-of-the-box sort of um, dashboards or some recognition for some commonly deployed services, mainly around things like response metrics and system metrics. So um, we took a look at your Prometheus server that was deployed, and it, we saw it was picking up some Nginx ingress metrics, uh, as well as some Kubernetes metrics. And so we went ahead and simply rendered these in the dashboard out of the box for you, so you didn't have to worry about uh, doing any of this yourself. You can also go ahead and change, for example, the timeline here to get a better sense of what that looks like. If you can zoom in here to 30 minutes and take a little bit of a closer look at some of these values here. You can see here our latency has gone up. Um, as a, uh, in certain cases, perhaps as some additional load been through on this platform. Um, so let's go to our some metrics here. You also can, of course, add your own metrics, as I mentioned before, whether they're business metrics or response metrics. You can simply provide us with the, the Prometheus query uh, that you'd like to use, and then some simple things like what the labels and, and, and things like that should be. And we'll go ahead and add it here on the dashboards. You can customize this to, uh, to, your, to your own liking. Um, in the near future, we're also looking to also add some source control dashboards you can define them in YAML, in your repo, and you can have a different set of dashboards loaded for different services or things like that as well, um, in addition to these sort of out of the box detected ones. So that's a bit of a quick tour there on the metrics. Oh, also I want to mention if you have a, a higher tier of GitLab, um, you can also take advantage of some of our alerting capabilities. And so for example, you can say that if the alerting threshold uh, goes over, say for example, 1%, um, I can go ahead and add an alert, and you can see here that I'll start, of course, getting some alerts here shortly um, as uh, we've exceeded this uh, percentage on this given deployment here. And I can go ahead and I can remove this alert as well. Um, so some examples there on, on setting some alerts. A um, couple other uh, quick features here as well. Um, if we go into the uh, operations tab, uh, or really are on, uh, we can see some other options around things like error tracking and incidents. So you can see here we can actually tell GitLab to create an issue um, uh, and then pick a template if we wanted to uh, when alert is created. And then also we've configured, uh, I'll reset the scene, I forgot that the token shows um, uh, for a sentry integration. Um, so I mentioned before, kind of earlier on, that we're looking to sort of be able to really provide some contextual uh, analysis of some of this data, right? So the error tracking here currently in our first iteration is a, a bit of a list here of the errors we've seen from the project, um, but also we're looking at, to go ahead and leverage some of this cool sentry integration that will try and find sort of like suspicious commits, right? So for this error, this particular commit seems suspicious. We can then roll them up and then, for example, on the merge request page or elsewhere, you can then get that view of, you know, these errors seem to be caused by this particular merge request and have a more um, kind of cohesive look at these things and really try and surface them where developers are commonly looking at them in the MRs and things like that as well, as opposed to having to jump into Sentry. Um, so that's a quick tour of some of the uh, uh, monitoring features. Uh, one other uh, key area here for, for GitLab is that uh, we're also focused on uh, what we call uh, uh, GitLab self-monitoring. So it's listed here. Uh, what this is, is really uh, for all of our customers and really for ourselves as well, running GitLab.com, we want to provide a great experience in operating your GitLab instance, right? Whether, again, whether it's GitLab.com or whether it's a, uh, a, a, a GitLab deployment on a Raspberry Pi, we want, we want to make sure that that's a, a good experience as possible and that we can give you a great out-of-the-box observability suite uh, for the deployment, as well as also hopefully have some proactive alerts in case there's problems upcoming that you need to be aware of. Uh, things like running out of disk space or your sidekick queues are getting a little bit too long, you're gonna have some degraded performance, um, some things like that. 
Um, and so uh, that class of features are, uh, are we call it self-monitoring. Um, and we were working on those the last few months here to provide a really kind of better experience in, in that regard. And so, um, for example, with our release here in, in, in a couple of days, later, uh, later in June at 12.0, you'll have uh, an out-of-the-box for five instance uh, and a dashboard preloaded that's configured so you can um, really just kind of go there and get a sense of how your instance is performing, any problems there are, and we'll also start to um, email you if there's any alerts um, that you need to be aware of, again, for things like disk space outages or other kind of common scenarios. Um, we'll be working to pull this into GitLab itself using some of the minor features I just showed you around error tracking, logging, metrics, and dashboarding um, in the next couple months as well. And that way, you, uh, the current plan is to have a project within GitLab, which you can use as sort of your GitLab administration project, which will include things like, you know, again, all those metrics and dashboards, but also have serve as a home for things like, you know, how do we increase the disk space? Who should it be assigned to? And other operational tasks as well. Um, so that's kind of the um, some additional scope that we have as part of the monitoring team. Um, one other aspect is that the monitoring team is also can be considered sort of the GitLab charting team um, in the sense that we're building out a lot of the uh, different charting capabilities of GitLab. And so as you see some of these uh, line charts and sort of these single stack charts, um, those are built by the monitor team and they'll be reused across the entire product going forward for uh, other parts as well. So you'll, if you look for some of the, uh, for example, the um, GitLab uh, accepting merge request uh, issues in the monitor section, you'll probably find some around charting and things like that uh, more broadly. And those are sort of our, our widget type uh, workflows. Um, so it's a quick tour of some of the monitor features and sort of the, the, the surface area and scope. Um, I'll pause there. I'm not, I, I guess we're recording this, so it's not uh, live interactive, but Ray, uh, any questions um, they might have or areas that we should cover, David as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, thanks for the overview, including uh, the demo of, of monitoring. Just a couple of things I wanted to point out. I mean, thanks for uh, sharing the product categories page. I mean, one of the things I wanted to highlight there was that I mean, we have a list of people that are identified, uh, like including product managers and like a back end engineers or front end engineering managers. Uh, if you're working on an issue for monitoring, I mean, people should definitely feel free to ping any one of those and issues or, or MRs as, as people are working on them. And the other thing I wanted to ask you, um, uh, Joshua, was on the direction page for monitor, uh, in addition to sort of the planned items, I noticed that you have a section called like other interesting items. Um, I mean, I assume that those are like areas if any of the community members are interested in, they could sort of raise their hand and, and start contributing to. But. Yeah, exactly. So, so these are items that, that, um, that we felt were interesting that um, kind of uh, beyond sort of the upcoming release plan uh, might be interesting items for folks, for folks to work on. And so I kind of mentioned the multiple performance dashboards a little bit, um, some of that logging features as well with Loki. So, so some really cool stuff on the, on, the, on the coming kind of coming soon list um, here that if folks wanted to kind of get a, get a jump on, that would be great as well. I've also um, have a kind of a, a list of some uh, issues that um, are sort of smaller in scope that would also be great for folks to work on as well um, that we can perhaps talk through briefly here as well, sort of after the sort of the initial high level overview. Cool. Yeah, I'll probably, yeah, that's a great slide uh, that I'll probably post it on the hackathon page uh, later on in the day. So if you can, yeah. Okay, already, great. Yeah. Yeah. I'll can um, get that published as well. Um, cool. But, yeah, even beyond Hackathon, if people want to start uh, picking up this issue even after the event, I think, uh, thanks for highlighting those. Yeah, we have a, a label accepting merge requests as well. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a pretty a pretty broad label, actually, and that there's, unfortunately, there's a, a couple iterations. You have to find the right, the right iteration of accepting merge requests. But if you look for them in the label of monitor, um, you will get a a set, and I picked the wrong label here. Let, let, let me get the right. Except I think I think. Hold on. Um, we should we should fix this. Yeah, I it's, think it's one of the green ones. I'm not sure which one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this this needs to be like this, this is a very different participation. But if you find it, yep. um, these are issues that are are, are generally uh, should be triaged um, and and be uh, good candidates for. Um, 
uh, potentially uh, working on. Uh, and so if you want to work on one of these, um, just just you know uh, uh, grab the issue if you're passionate about it. Um, maybe if it's not entirely clear, um, some might have a totally fleshed out uh, sort of uh, a description there. Just you know, ping the product manager you found on the Sages page, you know, as Ray mentioned, or um, ping the engineering manager or the person who opened it if it's a GitLab or uh, and, and we can sort of iterate um, and align on a design and, and then kind of uh, you can go ahead and, and, and plow forward and make an MR as well. Um, but uh, most of them should be pretty well defined, but they have that label on them. So, Joshua, quick, quick question. I've noticed that there's monitor and there's the other uh, DevOps monitor label. Um, do you favor one uh, um, uh, over the other? Or yeah. It, that's a great question. Uh, so, so monitor is probably, the, to your point, the, the better one to, to key off of. Um, uh, the, the, the stage label is sort of going away in favor of the, the DevOps label. And so this should be one that, that we're um, going forward should be more heavily utilized. Um, but they're both kind of applied right now sort of equally or should be. But going forward, this one will, will sort of phase out the, 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 the monitor stage level. So um, yeah, so I think for kind of long-term usage, you should use this pair of, of labels. Um, if you'd like, if you're also passionate about a certain particular group, um, you can see we have the APM group as well as the debugging and health group labels. Um, and so you can use this as well to further refine, if you'd like to, um, the particular kind of group within the stage as well. Okay, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but again, we have, uh, as you can see here, quite a number of them. Um, but uh, a couple of the ones that, um, that the team just highlighted here briefly, uh, as far as uh, some ones that might be relatively uh, easier to work on and, and relatively fleshed out, um, would be uh, one of them being uh, on the self-monitoring category. So as I mentioned before, um, we have um, uh, sort of bundling Grafana uh, with uh, GitLab, and we'll have it on by default here in 12.0, along with having it hooked in for GitLab OAuth as well. And so um, what would be great is if, uh, on, the, on sort of the admin experience workflow, I can't show it here since I'm not a, a GitLab.com admin, um, but you can actually, there'll be like a little wrench and you go to the wrench and you'll, you'll see this monitoring tab. Um, and the idea here is to actually have sort of a, like a metrics page here you can click on, which will then take you off to Grafana and you can then of course go ahead and take a look at that dashboard. Um, so pretty small change here, I think, on the admin workflow, but a great way to help drive awareness of that embedded um, Grafana instance that's, that's going to be available here um, in 12.0 by default. Um, so that, that should be a relatively easy one to go ahead and add. And thank you, Dale, for, for opening it up. Um, another quick and easy one here uh, would be some internationalization support uh, within Monitor. Um, so right now we have uh, uh, average and max, uh, for example, on the, the legend name. Uh, these are currently not uh, really available to be translated. Um, so it'd be great if we could go ahead and um, kind of update uh, the widget there to make that support um, sort of localization. Um, and you can see here, we actually have a GitLab UI project, which as I mentioned before, how the monitor team is kind of building a lot of those widgets. Um, this is kind of our, <laughs> excuse me, a uh, little widget library. Um, so if you kind of go over here to, and I'll share this link, um, you'll see some of our, uh, our widget library here in, in the GitLab UI project as well. Um, so um, this is where a lot of uh, the charts are defined and then we're used across, across GitLab. Um, so that's, that's the uh, internalization of the chart legend one, uh, which again would be hopefully a pretty low hanging fruit uh, for folks to, to try and jump on. Um, and the other two uh, are, are more on logging um, and really trying to help uh, increase the discoverability and usability of logging. So we kind of do that first iteration of logging where we had it, if, if you remember seeing it, underneath uh, or really kind of part of deploy boards. So this feature here is what we call deploy boards. Um, and um, folks might not be aware that you can actually click on this box. Um, but for the first iteration, it was kind of the easiest way to, to kind of build out this workflow. Um, but it would be great if we could go ahead and really add uh, logging uh, to the operations tab here. And so you'd have it alongside metrics and tracing and you could just jump right in there without having to go through that deployed boards workflow. Um, so the kind of the first step there would be to really just take that dropdown you see here and add an environment dropdown as well. And that way you could jump between production or staging or a review application 
um, easily from the from a single workflow. Um, and then once we have that, we can then, of course, hopefully simply add the little sidebar item for logging. And then you can then have a default to production. And if it doesn't pop up, well, then, of course, just lets you just pick one and you can just choose the, you know, the environment drop down to, to grab the particular environment you're looking for and then own in on the particular pod as well. So um, those are a couple of ones that uh, might be great ones to sort of um, get started with, which hopefully um, aren't sort of some really heavy lifting. Um, and then, of course, you're also more than welcome to grab any of the ones here uh, that are accessible from our device as well. I'll, I'll just paste this uh, this filter query here in the GitLab chat as well for folks to kind of jump cool. in on and take a look at. All right, thank you. Awesome. Well, yeah, thanks for the great overview and especially highlighting uh, issues where uh, we are uh, looking for help from the community members. Uh, uh, David, anything else that uh, you want to cover? Got looks like about four minutes left. But. No, just perhaps a quick question, uh, Joshua. What, uh, what do you think the skills, uh, what skills should, uh, should contributors possess uh, to contribute to, uh, to monitor? It seems like a wide range, but I'm not sure. Um, Sure, you can give me a better answer. Yeah, so I, I think um, uh, it re really kind of depends on on the feature area. So, the, so the self monitoring stuff really, um, I, I think, just some some probably some easy front end stuff to just add the item here in the in the list and have it um, open up a, a given URL. Um, so for GitLab, uh, we, we def we're going to default to um, really the really the root URL. Um, the dash, and then, and then I think there's something called Grafana. Um, and that way, um, simply, basically, if you click on that new item, it just goes here, and then, and then that's really kind of all we need you to do. Um, so that one, I think, should be relatively um, kind of open for anyone who, who has some, you know, some basic front-end skills, for example, which is one of the reasons that we picked it. Um, this one is similarly as well. I, I can't remember if this is an, uh, like a, an SVG diagram or not, but um, this one might be a little bit more involved since you're dealing in sort of the GitLab widgets themselves. And this might be a little more applicable for, um, it, I, I'm not sure if it's view or not, but um, some of with our front end uh, toolkit uh, would, would be would be great here. Um, it also has some understanding of how we sort of localize strings in GitLab would be awesome. Um, and then these two for logging, um, uh, would be probably good for someone who either uh, is looking to sort of um, try Kubernetes or is familiar with Kubernetes because you'll, you'll need to have a Kubernetes cluster uh, up and running in order for this to work. Um, that's because we actually ask Kubernetes for the logs for the pod um, currently. And then you know, hopefully in the future here, we'll, we'll work with Loki. Um, but for right now, it's, it's sort of a Kubernetes uh, only offering. And so you'll have to have a cluster either Minikube or something else. Um, and that documentation I mentioned earlier around the GDK um, uh, can help to get you going, um, but you might be helpful to have some familiarity with, with Kubernetes. Um, although we do use a library, uh, uh, a Kube client uh, for this. And so much of the APIs are already there, um, but imagine for testing and things like that, you'll probably still need to have an environment up and running to make sure things are working as you'd expect. Um, but yeah, so it really kind of runs the gamut from uh, sort of the self-monitoring stuff, really requiring not much in the way of sort of Kubernetes experience and just kind of more of general uh, front end, perhaps some back end work on those. Um, and then as you get into some of like the logging and things like that, um, you might need some similar tools. Um, it is worth noting actually that I, I did demo that um, uh, we, we utilize the Kubernetes deployed version of Prometheus. However, um, we actually support uh, really allowing users to specify any Prometheus URL. Um, so if you wanted to work on some of the dashboarding features, um, you actually don't need to have um, uh, Prometheus uh, deployed or even running in Kubernetes. Um, you can actually, um, if, if you haven't deployed it to your cluster and sort of it being managed, we'll simply ask you to give us the Prometheus URL here and then you can save it and then the save stuff will work. Um, so you might not need to have Kubernetes unless you're doing something specific with Kubernetes, like some of the uh, um, uh, cluster alerts and things like that, that might be in there. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, and, and again, thanks everyone for the hackathon and, and thanks Ray and David for setting us up. This is awesome. 
Um, so if need be help, definitely, as Ray mentioned, uh, ping us on, uh, ping me on, on any of the issues and things like that. We'll try to help. And um, thanks everyone for your uh, enthusiasm and support of GitLab. Uh, it, it, it's great. And, and that's really a lot of what draw, uh, a lot of what helps to drive us along is sort of the community's enthusiasm. So uh, thanks everyone for paying attention and for looking to contribute to GitLab. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't have said it any better. And uh, for people that are watching the recording, if you have any questions uh, after you view the recording, I mean, feel free to post questions on Gitter. Uh, and uh, David and I will be happy to answer them or like ping somebody like Josh, Joshua if we don't have, a, have, the, have the right answers. Well, all right. Thanks again for your time, Joshua. We'll of course. Uh, let you go. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Right, thank you. Bye.